This is John T for the Boxing Voice. I'm delighted to say I'm joined this evening by English lightweight contender Kane Baker from the Matchroom Stable. How are you doing, Kane? I'm very well, John. Thank you, mate. How are you? Yeah, I'm really good. Thanks. Thanks for coming on, bud. I've been trying to track you down for a couple of weeks. You're a busy man. What have you been sparring tonight? Uh, well, it, it got cancelled, but I've done a strength and conditioning tonight now. Uh, just I've literally just come back from that and uh, I'll be sparring and we're going to Wales in the morning. So I'll be sparring in the morning. Who are you sparring in Wales out of interest? Uh, I'm not. Uh, it's going to be a couple of lads. I think one of them's Reese Edwards, very good fighter. Um, and I'm not too sure who the other lad is. Good stuff. It's probably not too far from you from Birmingham. Was that hour and a half? Yeah, hour and a half. Not too far at all. Yeah, not too bad. Well, look, welcome to the site. First time we've had you on the Boxing Voice, so we're really pleased to have you on. Really interested to hear about your uh, fight coming up. But before I come on to that, talk a little bit about your career, if you don't mind. So last time out, you were on another matchroom card and you won. Uh, so well done there. Um, how was the experience in the bubble? Yeah, it's... Uh... I'm kind of they well, some of the people in the bubble and from back matchroom call me the part of the bubble rap. Uh, because I, I was obviously in the bubble three times. Mm -hmm. I only fought twice, but I was in there three times. So uh yeah, uh third time lucky it was for me, and uh I got the win and uh I just did really well to the uh bubble and I and I, I'm looking forward to going back. Yeah, I bet you are. I'm going to come on to the upcoming one because it's the big card that's in Gibraltar that everyone's talking around. So it was a good win last time out. If you don't mind me asking the fight before Kane, you actually lost it on a points decision and I was watching the fight at home myself and you looked disgusted by the result. Talk me through that fight, if you don't mind, and how that went and why you felt you got robbed. Uh, yeah, well, I think it was just the heat of the moment while I was showed a little bit of bad sportsmanship by leaving the ring early, which isn't like myself normally. I'm quite a sporting person. But uh, Fiaz tricked me into thinking he was going to fight me. He said a few things the couple of days in the lead up and in the bubble, and I really thought he was going to uh, have a scrap. But he he, he, done, he done what he needed to do, and he, stick to, he stuck to the jab. He had a lovely jab, and he, buck, he boxed really well. And, uh, yeah, uh, but in the heat of the moment, I was very gutted because I fell into the trap of thinking he was going to fight me and he, he didn't. He uh, he boxed and moved. And, uh, yeah, I was I was gutted. I thought he was very close, though, either way. Yeah, no, it was a really close fight. And it, I think, it, not myself, but even all the fans, some were like, you won, he won, so it was a close one. Which shows a vote of confidence in you because Eddie Hearn brought you back out again quite quickly. So, as you've mentioned, it's the third time you've been in the bubble. The first time it didn't come off, I think that was because of COVID or something went wrong. But actually, you've had two fights and now it's a third one. How does it feel to know that Eddie's bringing you out again on such a big card that's a pay-per-view with Dillian White out in Gibraltar? It's uh yeah, I just I keep I keep pinching myself and uh I, I think he has took a liking to me, Eddie, in some way because uh yeah, obviously yeah. yeah there's a lot of fighters queuing up to uh to get out and uh little old Kane's Kane's out again. So uh yeah, I'm just uh, delighted to be going to that and a new experience because obviously the bubble's gonna be in Gibraltar this time. Yeah, definitely. Well, look, he definitely has shown a liking to you. You can tell that from afar. You'd probably know that more than me. But the fact that you've been out on these cards, you lost one straight back out, another good win, bring you out on a big card. So um, what, uh, what's happening with Gibraltar? Are you going to fly out a week before or is it longer before? Have you got a quarantine? So it's the 27th, which will be on the Saturday. On the Monday, we have to go to Wembley. Uh, and we, we're going to have a COVID test there. And I isolate for the for the twenty four hours, and then Tuesday the the whole of the matchroom set up, Eddie Hearn, all the fighters will will we'll fly to Gibraltar from there. Nice. There must be some of the fighters that are on the plane that are going to fight each other. I hope they don't have a fight like twenty thousand feet in the air with a couple of beers inside them. That'd be good fun. I I, I hope not. Look, luckily enough, I think Dillian White's going from Portugal, so that's. One, uh, at least the heavyweights won't be scrapping on the plane because I'm scared of flying. I don't really, not too keen on flying. So I can't imagine them two rolling around on the plane would, would help me. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Have you flown often before or not? Yeah, I do fly quite a lot. Um, but yeah, I, I have been known to uh, have a panic attack and shed tears. And it just, I could be fine halfway through and then just all of a sudden it, it comes on me. It's a, a, a weird one. Oh, Jesus. Well, but, you're uh, yeah. 
was it about two hours, two and a half hour flight? Yeah, two two and a half hour flight. Yeah, so you shouldn't be too bad then. Get up in the air. You can't drink loads of beers because you're trying to make weight. So you're just going to have to close your eyes and pray, mate. I, 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 that's, that's normally what I do when I go with my partner. I'll, I'll calm the nerves and have um, a stiff drink. But yeah, there'll be none of that on this one. Yeah, I think we all do that, mate. Well, look, good luck with the flight. I'm sure you'll be fine there. So just quickly before I move on to the actual fight night, I'd like to talk a little bit about your career, if that's all right. A couple of really interesting stories. The first one I'd like to ask about is your weight loss. So for any of the fans who aren't aware, I don't know how much you weighed. Hopefully you'll tell us in a minute. But if you look at your pictures on Instagram and social network, you were a big fella, to say the least. And not only did yeah. you lose it, but you're now a professional athlete and chiselled. Well, talk me through what happened. Um, yeah, well, uh, I was 14, I think 10. I remember weighing 14 stone 10. I might have touched a bit heavier than that, close to the fifth, very close to the 15. Um, yeah, and uh, being short, shortish, and so I was very round. Uh, and the, the white collar and the boxing, and uh, that that's where that's where the weight loss started. And and it and I've just could just come down gradually and. And as fighters in the professional ranks normally go up the ra- the weights as they get older, I've done it in reverse and come down the weights. I started off boxing at super welterweight as a professional, and uh, now this fight will be at super featherweight, nine stone four, which is uh, which is career lightest for me. Yeah. So when you were at your biggest weight, had you already started boxing or not? No. So it's literally uh-huh. you're at your weight, then lost it. What did you do? Just go to the gym, go on a diet, and then take up boxing? Uh, yeah. I, well, I'd always, I'd done a bit of sparring. I, I, I was a bit of a feisty kid, so I'd, I'd do the sparring, but I'd never into skipping or running or training. So I'd literally just go there and uh, go in the ring and get beat up. But that was my little release. And then, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd done a few white collar fights and things like that. I think I was fighting the white collar at 12 and a half stone, just under 13. And then, uh, and that was some lumps I was fighting. <laughs> Looking okay. back, I think, wow, I, how we got in with some of them guys. And uh, it, it's just been a gradual process over a, a long period of time. Uh, yeah, looking probably eight to 10 years, really. And I've just slowly, slowly, slowly come come down. I think it's so inspirational, mate. I genuinely mean that because I, I was a big lad myself at one stage. I'm a bit taller than you, but I weighed 17 stone. And I went down as low as like nine stone three, which probably wasn't healthy. I'm hovering around about 12 stone now, which I'm happy with. But actually for people to look at... Well. Yeah, which I'm five foot eight and a half. I'd say five foot eight and a half, five foot nine. It's probably five foot eight, but I'm happy. I'd rather be maybe half a stone lighter, something like that. But actually to see someone who's gone from being a really big lad that you were to not just lose it, but to condition yourself. And I wonder, because when I lost the weight the first time, I had sort of like little bits around the side. But when you look at you, you chiseled because you work at it because you're a fighter. So, you know, well done on that, mate. Really, really good. I'll just talk to you a little bit about... Uh, your career at the beginning, if it's right, you were starting along really well. I think you were like four and oh. You then came up against a um, a young prospect in Connor Ben. Um, and then yeah. I think, the, talk to me about that fight. Did you lose that on the night? Yeah, I got stopped in the second round against uh, Connor, who's a very good puncher, very good fighter. Uh, and it was a, but it was an experience that I really, really loved. Uh, it was the first time I fought at your call. Yeah. Uh, and I had a bit bit of um it just 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 a it was a part where I, I thought wow this isn't for me now when I got out I was I was very emotional after the fight and then my partner said to me come come round to the uh the pub and I went round to the pub and all my friends and family were there and they were singing because I was gutted that they'd brought they'd spent a lot of money I'd sold a couple hundred tickets and I thought I didn't even see the blooming the end of the battle mm. I, I was out and uh yeah. to walk around them to be so happy and they was cheering me on and singing my name and and that was a special moment in my career really even though it was a devastating time being my first loss and, and being my first time I got stopped uh, the fans loved me for it my, well my friends loved me for it and my family loved me for it and they uh yeah and I'll never forget that moment really 
Well, you can tell you're a big ticket seller, mate, and you're a likable guy and you're in, you're from a big city, the second biggest city in the country. So when things are back to normal, I'm sure you'll get the ticket uh, sales going there. There's no shame in losing either to Conor Ben, and especially when you think about the weight, mate, because you're now at a weight that you've got to. If you're fighting at super feather, what's that, 9-4? Conor Ben's at well, yeah. right, which is 10 stone 7. And he's definitely yeah. holding his own. I'll come on to Connor in a minute, if that's all right, and see what you think of his next fight. Um, and, and then um, I think you might have lost the next one against Gary Cully, which, again, no mean defeat. He's out again shortly. He's still undefeated himself. But then you sort of yeah. like started making a bit of a comeback. And um, then there was a fight I was really interested about, and I'm sure the fans will be interested here. I think, um, sorry to say it, but did your granddad pass away? You went into a fight with a shirt, and there was a bit of trouble with it. Can you tell us about that? Yes, yeah, so um, yeah, my granddad passed away, and he was a, a massive, massive. He even played for Aston Villa back in the day, and he also played for Birmingham City. Um, but he was a massive, massive Villa fan. Uh, he would always talk to me about the Villa, and he loved Villa Park. And he sadly passed away, and he, he didn't get to see my fight. But I got to fight for the Midlands title at Villa Park. So. Uh, I, we, me and my mom and my family decided that it'd be a great time to spread my granddad's ashes. And uh, so we got the ashes sorted. And then I, I, we come up with another one. And my, my cousin's nan and granddad, which wouldn't be my nan and granddad, their nan and granddad, but they're still close to me. They, they decided to, uh, we decided to cut a Blues and Villa shirt in half and sew them together. No one's ever done I'm, that before, it, I guarantee you. <laughs> no one would ever have done that before. I bet that was brilliant. Yeah, it was absolutely brilliant. And she was worried at first how it was going to look or how it was going to turn out. But the, uh, they turned out absolutely spot on. And I put my granddad's name on the back. And um, yeah, I, I, I wore it into the ring on, on fight night. But being uh, quite early in my career and not knowing the rules, uh, it was obviously you're not allowed to wear football any football type of top, top kit or colours or things like that. And I, and I didn't do it in a jest. I just literally done it for my granddad. Mm. So, uh, and I, I won the Midlands title that night and I, I wore my shirt. shirt and then uh, the next day I got a call off my manager and I was looking to take another fight. And he said, uh, you're not going to be able to take that fight. He said, uh, you're going to be suspended. And I was suspended for a few weeks. Uh, until I had to go and see, sit in front of the board, the boxing board. And uh, luckily enough, when I did go in front of the boxing board, that was very, very sympathetic. And they had, um, I was looking at getting a fine, maybe because of what I'd done, breaking the rules and stuff. Um, but they didn't give me a fine. They said I'd suffered enough punishment by missing one of my fights. And then they, they understood my, my story. They just said they wish I would have approached them to ask for it to be happen. And they had to go through with the punishment as they did, but they give me no fine, and then they let me off and give me back my license. Ah, that's bang on. Do you know what? I knew the story. That's why I asked. I wasn't sure of the outcome. So, common sense always comes through. And I, I, we interviewed Robert Smith recently. Or I'm sure you know um, from the British Boxing Board of Control. He's a top fella. And when you were telling me the story, and when I'd read it earlier, I was like, you know, it doesn't feel like he's trying to do anything to antagonise like a crowd here. It feels like that was so emotional and sentimental to him. That uh, you were only yeah. banned for a few weeks and you didn't get a fine, so that was good. So, are you a Birmingham fan or a Villa fan? I'm a Birmingham fan, yeah, and my granddad was obviously a massive Villa fan. So, we won't talk it's... about football anymore, then, for you, no? No, 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 no. Dreadful not, times. Not a good season if you're a Birmingham fan for you, but also the villains no. are doing all right, to be fair. I've got lots of family up that way who are all Villa fans, to be fair. So, cool. Um, right, well, moving. Well, to I'm probably the only Blues fan who's got a bit of a soft spot for Villa. <laughs> yeah, fair play, especially with Grandad and stuff like that. That's good. Um, right, we're well, moving on to the big night. So what do you know about your opponent, Kane? I know he's undefeated. He uh, he got a draw for the English title. He's signed with Dillian White. Uh, and, he, and I've looked at him and he looks a very good fighter. Uh, and I'm going to be up against it. Yeah. But you fancy your chances, right? Because you're on this resurgence at the moment where you're sort of like changing people's opinion and making them think you're on a comeback and stuff like that. I'm assuming that he's probably on the card because he's got a close relationship with Dillian. There's a few other fighters on there, but you're coming to spoil, yeah? 
Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah, if he um, if he hasn't worked hard, more dogs. Just can I just quickly let more okay, dogs? Okay. Hey, oh. yeah. Sorry about that. That's all right, mate. No worries. All the fans will be watching, thinking it's exactly the same. Usually, I've got the kids trying to bang the door in the bedroom where I'm doing the interview. So carry on. <laughs> um. Yeah. So. Uh, I, I am in the away corner and it is up against it. But I mean, I mean, if he if he hasn't worked hard, then he's he's going to come unstuck because I'm going to be absolutely relentless come fight night. Well, it's a big opportunity for you. Like we've mentioned, you have been out on a few Eddie cards. I think he has got a soft spot for you and I get it. I think the fans totally get it. Should you come through that fight, come the summer and the autumn, when things are a bit more back to normal back here with the pandemic and stuff like that, I could see that he would be seeing you maybe headlining or having a huge card in Birmingham at that indoor arena and having you as either the main fighter or one-off as a few good fighters in Birmingham. So lots for you to go for. And these are kind of life-changing fights for you, right? Because if you were to get a big card like that with your ticket sales, you can make some good money for yourself. Definitely. And uh, I'm on like a deal with Eddie at the minute. Winner stays on is, is, is what it is. So uh, I've, I've, got, I've got to win. Oh, and, I, and that's what I'm going to do. Win. So, uh, and then hopefully, yeah, bring it back to Birmingham. But my dream really was the first time I was in the bubble was to fight in Eddie's garden. And that 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 fell through. So if I do win this, I, I've heard him say that he's got plans to do the, bring the garden back in the summer, and I, I'd love to go there and fight there. Definitely, that was um, that is something I'd look forward to doing. I saw the footage at the time. How gutted you were! You were in the bubble, I think, when it didn't go through, wasn't it? I could see the frustration, and understandably because that's your big night. But at least you've taken the opportunities going forward. And if it is in the bubble still, and it is in Eddie's garden, great. But even better for you if it's in front of all your fans in Birmingham, I guess. Uh, yeah, well, that, that that's got to be top of the tree. Either way, if if we come with everyone with the bad times that we've had. Um, to, to get, to, I know a lot. I'm a massive boxing fan myself, and and I know a lot of my friends and family are boxing fans. And uh, to get back to normality and and be at some kind of event would be would be what we want really. And if you can get it at home in Birmingham and I can be on the bill, that's going to be amazing. I'm sure we will have you on the bill. Right, look before I let you go. Um, a couple of little questions. I mentioned Connor Ben, so obviously he's an ex-foe and he's a good Brit on on, on the rise at the moment. Do you think he'll beat Samuel Vargas when they're out in a few weeks? Yeah, one hundred percent, and and I hope so. I've been a massive from before I fought him. I watch I've watched his whole career uh, and the progression, and uh, he's just got so much better and he's so exciting. He's he can, he can, he can be he's been like we've seen against Paynard. He, He's, he's, he can be vulnerable. He's been caught and tagged and gone down, but that fighter's instinct he has got is um is exciting to watch, and he's and the devastating power to go with it. So, yeah, I'm hoping for for a knockout victory for Conor Ben, and uh, I'll be cheering him on all night. Good stuff, and that's a good fight. Which brings me on to was it last week or the week before? Josh Kelly sadly lost to David Avanesian. And rightly so, on the night, David Avenesian was a lot stronger and got the win. If Conor Ben wins, I think they were on a collision course with Kelly. It may well look like that Conor Ben may fight Avenesian. Um, how do you think Conor would get on in that fight? Um, Avenesian is one... To, I've seen him spar, I've seen him fight, and uh, I've seen him fight live, and he's... He's a relentless. He's someone I look up to a lot, really, because he's just he's absolutely. He's a at what he does, and he knows what he's going in there to do. And people say, "Oh, he's not that. He's not that good." Lot. He's just he just come forward, but he hasn't. He's got so much about his game that he's unseen because it just it, it looks like he makes the other person not look as good. But he is really. He works hard. He's got a great coach in Cole Greaves, who's going to be cornering me on um, the 27th as well. That's a great so, coach having your corner. Yeah, he's going to be representing me on, half of B on behalf of BCB because they've got um, we've got a few fighters out that night, and I, I'm I'm with Cole Greaves in Gibraltar, and he's the only British fighter to win to fight and win in Gibraltar as it stands. Yeah. 
So, uh, yeah, I'm going with uh, Cole Groves and I can't wait to do that. And uh, But Avenissi and Ben will be a great, will be a hell of a fight. Yeah, it will be. It would, and and, and I, I was really excited by Kelly Avenissi and like all the fans were, just purely because of the yeah. style mix, right? The slickster against the come forward. Actually, Connor Ben and Avenissian is just like, oh. <laughs> I don't know how long it lasts if it happens, to be fair. Like two magnets, they're just going to go. Yeah. And it's how long it will last. Because um, that's what I think. It will definitely end in a stoppage. I can see see that. But I couldn't pick which way. Yeah. I no. really couldn't. And again, right. another 50-50 fight, and there's loads of them at the moment. Look, well, we hope that Conor Ben does well, and then if that fight happens, that'd be great. So one last question before I let you go, Kane. You're on that big card, which is a pay-per-view card, as we've mentioned, so there's a few matchroom cards, but that's the one everyone's looking forward to, and that's the rematch with Dillian White against Povetkin. Um, as we're all aware, that the first outcome was a bit of a surprise for many fans. Dillian was doing well, but then he got caught with that knockout by Povetkin. How do you see the rematch going? Um... Well, Dillian was was schooling him. To be fair, wasn't he? he in the first fight, he was knocking him down. He, I think he 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 held back a little bit too much, uh, and let Povetkin obviously catch him because the last thing to go is your power. Yeah. Um, but I think this time we'll probably see the old Dillian White, and he'll he'll come forward and put it on him from the off. And it wouldn't surprise me in an early stoppage for Dillian White. Uh, yeah, I really think Dylan, even though I'm team Povetkin now. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. Well, look, we're looking forward to the card just quickly. So, win, lose, or draw for you. Will you stay a little bit longer in Gibraltar after, or will you fly back quite quickly? Um, well, due to all the, the problems and that, I can't get my partner to come out with me or nothing like that. So, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look on coming home as quick as I can. If, if things are different, it would have been somewhere I'd have stayed or I might even have moved on to somewhere else with my partner on a holiday. But, uh, yeah, with, with the times how they are, I'm just going to look to uh, get back and celebrate at home. Good stuff. Well, look, good luck to you, Kane. We look forward to picking up to you, picking up with you after the fight and we'll come and see you soon, all right? Thank you very much, John. Cheers, mate. All the best to you. See you. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to hit the like, subscribe and share. As always, if you want to support us to the next level, head over to the patreon.com backslash the boxing voice. We have tons of exclusive from Border Wars, from title, betting shows, the list goes on and on and on. But in addition to that, if you guys have questions for fighters, trainers, and promoters, this is where you can submit them. We will run out, get these questions answered, and put it back on the show just for you guys. Appreciate it. Peace.